Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We have got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff to talk about today in FIFA 20 Ultimate Team and talking about FIFA 21 Ultimate Team as well. I'm going to focus on the FIFA 20 content first and then talk about some of the new gameplay items that we learned about yesterday in Foot. Talk about those at the end of the video. I know a lot of you guys have heard a lot about this stuff already. There's been a lot of opinions released. A lot of stuff has been put out about the um, uh, new gameplay tactics. A lot of people have expressed their thoughts. I want to express mine shortly uh, through what I see in the pit notes, what I see through the new gameplay features that EA talked about. But I want to talk about today first, right? We have some leaks for today. Now, yesterday on Twitter, there was a lot of people saying that we are going to be getting a Mason Greenwood um road to the final card in fifa ultimate team and today is europa league and this is why i was a little bit you know not say that i didn't believe that leak right away but i'm a bit unsure about that and how that's going to work because today at 3 p.m my time i uh, not sure when that is in the uk or when that game is actually being played but manchester united are playing their second leg of the Europa League tomorrow. So a lot of times, and this is why I was a bit unsure, right? A lot of times they give you time beforehand, like we've seen this week with Mkhitaryan, Sarabia, and the Valverde SBCs. You've had plenty of time to complete those SBCs before the, the card would have a chance to get upgraded. Now, would they release another Rose of the Final item for a guy like Mason Greenwood after United win or maybe like during halftime or something? My only thought is maybe EA is trying something out with like live SBCs. Um, for a card that they're going to drop like during a game and maybe they give you a short amount of time to, to do it. I don't know. Uh, or maybe EA is going to drop the Mason Greenwood SBC after this game is played so that they don't have to upgrade him again. I don't know what they're going to do with that either. But suppose that there's going to be a Mason Greenwood coming. I think it would be an SBC, not an objective. Um, but again, we have the start of Europa League today, which means the potential for some cards to get upgraded. Now, how long are these cards going to take to upgrade? I think, if I remember correctly, back when we had older Road to the Final upgrades, it was taking somewhere around 24 to 36, sometimes 48 hours for them to upgrade Road to the Final. So it wasn't a right away type of thing. Um, I, I did think that it took them a bit to do that, kind of like with the summer heat cards for like the summer showdowns uh, and stuff like that. So if you have a Martial, if you have a um, maybe a Vendel left back card, 3-1 right there in that game, Wolves Olympiacos is interesting. Um, and then for, for Friday, uh, or actually, yeah, no, these are actually tomorrow. These, Inter Milan and Getafe play, and then on Thursday, Sevilla and Roma play. So Friday, Saturday is actually is obviously Champions League. But for the Wednesday, Thursday games, you could see some upgrades, right? I think a lot of people are looking towards this Sevilla and Roma game for the Diego Carlos, the Mkhitaryan, and the Juan Jesus. They're interested in that. But all eyes today are going to be on Manchester United and uh, of course, some of those Road to the Final cards. So let's talk Road to the Finals just for a hot second. A lot of these cards, again, are very rare. They're starting to rise. They're starting to get rare. People are buying them uh, because they think they're going to go up when they get upgraded. Here's my thing about Martial. Yes, this is a left mid, left wing card. It's probably going to be a 91 rated. He's got a 92 that's in season objectives uh, that is for technically, quote unquote, free in terms of coin value. Um, but... I feel like some of these cards have risen enough already. We're at a stage of the game where I don't know if there's going to be that much hype for these cards to actually rise up when an upgrade comes. Because is this card actually worth 200,000 coins? Well, it is Manchester United. It's Martial. Yes, possibly there's extra hype around this card. But maybe a guy like Ven Vendel. Wendel? Uh, I don't think it's Vendel. I think it's Wendel. That's how you say his name. The left back, this guy right here, with his road to the final. Uh, Europa League item. I'm not sure how much he costs these days. 40k, 50k for this card. This is going to be an 88 rated card. Um, if Leverkusen can come through and win uh, tomorrow, which they have a 3-1 lead on Rangers right now. So you would like to think that they can. But this card, you know, would he go up a little bit? Yes, possibly. But a lot of these cards have already risen already if you look at their footbin graphs. And I would show you footbin graphs right now. But footbin is actually down. If I go over to footbin.com, click on the link. Uh, the website is actually down right now, so I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, I can't see anything on Footbin at the moment, so I can't show you that. But I know a lot of these cards have started to rise. Road to the finals from the uh, Europa League and from 
the Champions League. So I'm a bit skeptical. Do I want you to sell on the hype and take the profit if you have some of those cards? I mean, that's kind of up to you. If you just want to use this card because, you know, it's going to get upgraded and you want to have fun with a 91 Martial, then hold on to it. I think you, you can expect to wait a little bit for that upgrade. Um, but if you're purely trying to make coins, the safe route here is to sell in the hype because I just don't know how much hype there is for this type of card in this game when we have so many other French left wings like Kings of Coman, Summer Heat that so many people have, um, you know, Griezmann team of the season card, all these other left wings that we now have in foot that are probably better and, uh, you know, just better in FIFA than that Martial is. So that's just something to think about. But I also know the Man U hype is real and it is big. So just be careful with the road to the final stuff. And especially if you have some road to the final cards for Champions League games coming up later this week, we'll talk more about these as we get closer. These guys have started to rise up as well, right? Um, Dybala was like 140, 150, even 130 before rewards last week. He's now 160, 170K. And I'm pretty sure I've seen this guy get closer to like 190 uh, at some points as well. Um, Conte, let me check where Conte is at because technically this card is most likely not going to get upgraded unless, you know, Unless Chelsea have some crazy, crazy comeback, this guy's probably not going to move too much in price just because he's not going to get upgraded anymore. Uh, so just kind of remember that with some of these cards that are on the market. They're, you know, they're live, but if their team is down 3-0 on aggregate, crazy things have happened, but um, it's not looking likely for some of those cards. But honestly, I think when the upgrades happen, um, you might see a bit of a drop on some cards since they've already ballooned up so much. And at the price points that they're at at this stage of the game, I feel like some of these cards might be a bit inflated um, just based off of how much their value is, depending on if they have a TOTS card, if they don't, um, if they are really linkable, if they're really hyped up, if people want to try them out in their teams, if it makes an end game squad. Those are kind of all the things you have to look for with some of these road to the finals and if they even have the possibility of going up uh, after they do get an upgrade or if they're just going to go down from people that are buying them, trying to sell them and make profit. So that's kind of my feelings about Road to the Finals. Again, we'll talk about those more in the coming days. Uh, but I wanted to touch on that as we do have Europa League uh, coming today. So this is the other thing that happened yesterday in FIFA Ultimate Team. EA with the worst edit job on a picture I've ever seen. EA Sports FIFA tweeted this out yesterday for the uh, man of the match. Brentford game in the EFL. This team, Fulham, is now headed up to the Premier League and they're giving him a man of the match card. 94 rated, 95, 92, 90, 92, and 93. They didn't have somebody on the sideline to prick to quickly uh, give this man a card, print it up, and give it to him. Uh, so they had to Photoshop one in here. And as you can tell, the Photoshop job is very, very poor. But I do think we're going to see this guy. Um, it's not in the game yet. And I've been looking around because that's a pretty solid looking card, right? And a lot of times when we've had these, it's actually been an objective. A couple times it's been an SBC. You know, if you remember back to like Ryan Sessegnon in FIFA 18 got, um, I think it was player of the year. Now, technically this is just a man of the match card. I don't know if that's a hero card because that item that they have in the tweet there is a card design that we don't really have, but it's very similar to the hero card design like our main man Akin Fenua has. As of right now, there is no SBC or objective or anything in the game for that Brian left back card. But just be careful because um, that is a possible content drop that we could see today at 6 p.m. UK. I, I don't even know who this guy is, like what his, what his rating is. I'm going to take a guess. Joe Brian. Oh, yeah, this is him. GG's. So uh, this guy is going to get an upgraded card today. And... Uh, it's going to be a card that a lot of people might want to go after. So just keep your eyes out for that. That's a really end game looking card. GGCEA for acknowledging big time ac accomplishments like that one right there. So that's kind of the FIFA 20 stuff. What could we get for content today? The 90 plus SBC might, I think expires today. So maybe we see a 90 plus SBC. Mkhitaryan goes away. I was originally thinking about doing this card. I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to pass on Mkhitaryan, but I am going to do Valverde and I am going to do Sarabia at some point. Uh, I'm just holding on to hope that we get some sort of repeatable SBC. We've been crying out for it for days. EA Sports has heard our cries. Surely they have. So we'll see if they put anything out. Re repeatable, any tots, repeatable, 90 plus tots. That's, of course, still our hope for today. Possibly a summer showdown uh, for Champions League. I know I've been saying this every day. I don't know why that content has not dropped yet, but it is what it is. Now, let's move on to the big 
content and the big stuff that happened today in FIFA Ultimate Team, and that is the new gameplay features and gameplay updates for FIFA 21. So I want to talk about this because yes, I'm not that big of a gameplay guy. I don't play the game that much. I've got less than a thousand games. Actually, I'm I'm almost up to a thousand games played on FIFA this year. I'm getting really close. Uh, in August, a thousand games played. GGs. But um, I'm not a huge gameplay guy, right? I spend most of my time trading on the market, just analyzing the content in the game and that matter. But this is still important because the backbone of FIFA is the gameplay. This is what it all boils down to. Whether you're doing an SBC to try the card out, uh, you know, you do an SBC because you want to use the player or you have it in your team and your team is used to play the game. FIFA gameplay is the backbone. This is why we care so much about it. This is why we're so critical of it at times. And it's always interesting when we see this new stuff every year, what they're adding to the game, what they've said is, hey, it's a new addition and you know everything that they do drop out so there's multiple things this year that they have highlighted as their main points and i'm going to quickly cover over a few of them today i know you've heard a lot of stuff about this already a lot of people have given their opinions i'm going to keep it nice short sweet and uh pretty crisp all right agile dribbling positioning personality creative runs natural collision system fundamentals of football so a lot of stuff that they're working on just reading the headlines and reading through some of the stuff at a broad level is really just in-game AI interaction with other AI, interaction with your players. It's more about um, not adding a new feature, like a new type of shot or a new type of way to do this or do that. There's a couple things in here that are like that. But most of this is related to making the gameplay just feel better. And that's the mentality that I like. Now, is it gonna is it going to actually come to results on the pitch? Is it actually going to you know, manifest itself in the game in a way that is fun, that we like? We shall see. But I like the just the way that this is going because they're brutally honest in some of these, in some of these videos and some of the stuff that they said. They're really honest. They said, hey, we didn't do very well in this or hey, we were trying to stop this in our game. And you know, they in a couple of the, the sentences they had in here, they didn't bash their game, but they said, hey, FIFA 20 was not very good at this. We want to make it better at FIFA 21. So this is also the first thing I'm going to say before I dive into this. The new stuff that they add to the game every single year, the new features, the new controls or whatever, it is always overpowered. So you're going to want to notice this stuff. You're going to want to read through it. And it's going to take a lot of practice at the beginning of the game. If you get the beta or the demo, you're going to want to start practicing the stuff. If you want to be an elite caliber player in FIFA, you're going to want to practice and practice and practice because there's new controls in this stuff that is very, very um, important to learn because it's going to be meta. Think about FIFA 18. The new stuff was the low driven, right? Low driven was the big thing that year because we had to, the double tap B shot, right? And that finish move, that way of scoring goals was the most overpowered thing in FIFA 18 by far. Everybody scored low drivens. FIFA 19, what happens? They come out with the move your keeper stuff, right? That was very OP. And I don't think there was anything about like, you know, the new skill moves. Maybe the Tornado was a new skill move and that was OP, right? So stuff like that is going to be OP. The new stuff is always more, has a tendency to be more overpowered in the game. And this is one thing that I'm a bit worried about, this agile dribbling. Um, you know, this year, a lot of people in FIFA got really good with left stick dribbling because the game was so slow. A lot of constant twisting, turning. And this is probably going to take it to another level of park the bus in FIFA 21. That's what I'm a bit scared about. But basically... To perform an agile dribble, as you can see down here, uh, this is Hyunmin Sun, Sun, my guy, dribbling with the ball, absolutely do doing Ashley Young dirty in this clip, as you can see. But it's almost just like uh, keeping the ball kind of between your feet. The agile dribbling, holding the R1 or the RB on the Xbox controller, very precise, rapid touches. And of course, the quicker and the better agility and balance type of player you have, like a Ben Yedder, like a Neymar, like an Mbappe, the better they're going to be. At making these dribble moves so that's just kind of like an easy thing to understand but uh you know probably people that have really really good dribbling abilities are going to be able to make people look silly in this game i hope skill moves are very fluent able to be chained you know a couple in a row because if you're a skiller on this game if you're really good with skills and dribbling you could have a massive advantage if you learn to do this very well in fifa 21 uh, contextual dribbling is enabled for certain positions uh, to achieve more dynamic dribble regardless of the technique you're using. We've also improved player agility and animation transitions by performing left stick dribbling and strafe dribbling using L1 as introduced 
last year. So strafe dribbling is kind of like when you're keeping your foot on the ball. Uh, if you guys ever use L1 or LB dribbling, it's kind of like you're keeping your foot almost on top of the ball. Honestly, it's used to kind of troll people most of the time. Uh, but that's kind of a fun method to use as well. And, you know, the more the more nitty gritty and the more stuff that they add with this, the more interesting that's going to get. Now, creative runs. This is something that's pretty cool. You can take control over the direction of the runs your teammates go your teammates make by flicking the right stick stick after triggering a run with L1 or LB. So when you make an L1 or LB pass, you can see there how this um, how Salah makes a pass and then he kind of flicks the stick in a downward motion and Salah makes the run downward. This is one of the things that I'm the most excited about for this game because you can control the AI players to an extent and make the runs yourself. This opens up a whole new realm of creativity. This is something that I would get excited about, right? I would get very excited about this. And I think this is going to be another one of the very, very overpowered features in Foot 20, right? Because if you're good at this and you know to drag this Salah in behind and it's going to position change him to that center back, which he's going to bring forward, you now have to make that tough decision to whether am I going to cover Salah's run or am I going to go to the ball. This is also going to encourage more parking the defense in the box because, of course, if he has a CDM sitting down here at the box, it's going to be harder to make that run and the pass. So, again, something that's from this year, it's going to transition over into next year. Uh, direct pass and go as well. Um, I'm going to leave the link to all these pitch notes down in the description if you want to read it more yourself. Um, and please feel free to comment as well on this video with your some of your thoughts. Um, and then, of course, you can do a decide where your teammates make their run by pass by immediately flicking the right stick in the desired direction. Okay, that was just what I was talking about uh, right there. So the other one is a uh, direct run or direct pass and go with five different players at the same time. Um, and basically what that does is player lock, press in both sticks at the same time to lock your current player when in attack. When you're locked to a player past the ball, the CPU AI will then take control of that on ball player, allowing yourself to move off the ball, move off the ball. Yes, that is correct. Move off the ball and ask for a pass back in a better position. So it's almost like the CPU takes control of that player. You're on autopilot and then, uh, you have control of your player kind of basically when you go to get that ball. That's going to be perfect for setting up first time shots and, and setting up like a fake shot in the box for a skill move. That's going to be a skill that is going to be very good to learn in FIFA 20. So this, they, as I said here, there's a very limited time. So you're going to have to practice this. It's a very limited window when you can get that run off as well. Position personality. Uh, this is again, more of an AI thing. I don't think this is going to make that much of a difference. This is just kind of some, you know, blah, blah, blah about, um, defensive awareness and positioning probably being more important statistics than ever this year. And when EA points something out like that, we kind of have to pay attention. So positioning and defensive awareness are going to be big this year for FIFA. And then this is one that I was kind of interested in as well. The attacking and positioning attribute impact, right? So if you have somebody who has 90 or better positioning, uh, you know, if they have high positioning, they're going to stop with that back line, not find themselves off sides instead of a low position player who's going to kind of keep running. Kind of makes sense, right? But it's nice to see a graphic like this, to see it like that. Passer readiness runs, just the behavior, like understanding when the, the, the passer is ready to make a pass and that timing can be put up there perfectly uh, is interesting to read about as well. Opening up space as well. You know, some of the stuff in here. I find this clip kind of interesting because I can't stop this, but as watch the ball, as this guy gets the ball, it goes through his foot, right? Uh, you, <laughs> I kind of find that interesting. That's one of the things we always point out in FIFA. Watch this middle striker. The ball goes through his foot. If you, you want to pause the video really quick right here, uh, right about right now, the ball goes through his left foot before he makes that pass. So again, we're still going to have some of that visual glitch stuff in FIFA. That's hard to make that animation work to get that pass off quickly. Um, but just some, something that I saw and I wanted to point out to you guys. Defending again, they're talking about defensive awareness with run tracking. Uh, you're going to have to be smart this year because of all the new attacking that you can, you know, put your own runs in and move your players off the ball. It's going to be very, very important. Uh, smoother encounters is, is interesting. Um, you know, I feel like this is going to cause... FIFA 20, as you can see right here, uh, the difference between 20 and 21 
you can see how there's kind of like a jumbled mess. Players were falling over everywhere, and it was just like a whole big mess, right? Now, FIFA 21, what you see is that defender that came in went to come clear the ball. Instead of falling over here like he did, this defender now is able to recover very quickly and clear that ball. I know a lot of you guys call like speed up lag a thing, or like when a player gets a speed boost. The only issue I have with this is a player might feel like they're getting a speed boost, and it might look a bit unrealistic in some circumstances in this game because of this new update right there. Uh, another idea here with that, uh, enhanced CPU AI in competitor mode. They did something with headers as well. Uh, and so supposedly FIFA 20, we made a decision to buff or to nerf heading. And now they're basically buffing it this year with manual heading to enable this option. A player will set the assisted headers option to off as detailed later. I'm not going to read too much about this, uh, but make sure you read up on some of this stuff. They talk about defending a bit more, blocking, passing. This is a bit of a problem. Um, they're basically adding blocks. They're more, more block shots in FIFA. So you're going to have to basically dribble the ball into the goal. If you want to score, um, you know, supposedly they are making passing better as well. There's a new crossing trajectory. So read up on this as well. If you want to learn those and then animation fluidity, uh, yeah, so I mean, th there's some more bridge and nutmeg skill move cancel foul advantage. That's kind of cool. You can ca cancel the foul advantage if you want to instant hard tackles, set up touch 2.0, improve finesse shots. We'd love to see that. Um, and then the super cancel mechanics. This is a big one as well. If you're a skiller, you can cancel skill moves right here. If you guys have not seen any of these tweets right here, this is from Dr. Poplove or Poplove on Twitter. Uh, you know, he actually goes through a really good amount of stuff right here. Uh, this is a guy that works at EA. So it's accurate at Dr. Poplove on Twitter. You want to check out a couple of these tweets. He goes into a little bit more description and detail on some of those skill move cancels, the instant hard tackles, and some of the actual like button press controls for FIFA 21 and the new updates and stuff like that. So that was a lot of stuff to talk about. I appreciate you guys hanging in there today. Uh, I talked for a while, but I'll leave the link to those tweets and to the pitch notes down below in the description. So make sure you check those out. Drop in the comments what you think. Some people are really excited. Some people are like, oh man, it's the same old BS from EA every year. You know what? I'll remain cautiously optimistic until we see a game, until we see the beta, until we see the demo and stuff like that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Smash a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below if you have any more questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.